the past, people used to catch young tuna from the wild, raise them, and breed them for tuna farming. This process stopped a new generation of tuna from breeding in their natural habitat. Bluefin tuna, the largest tuna, can live up to 40 years and are the most expensive fish in the world. A single bluefin tuna was once sold for over $3 million, setting a new record. A Japanese restaurant owner has paid a record $3.1 million for single Pacific bluefin tuna. Join us in this video as we delve into how fish farmers raise millions of bluefin tuna every year. Bluefin tuna farming, also known as tuna aquaculture, involves raising bluefin tuna in captivity for commercial purposes. Here's a simple explanation of how it's usually done. Tuna farms obtain juvenile bluefin tuna through the process of juvenile acquisition. Typically, these fish are obtained from hatcheries or the wild, where captive parents breed them. The young tuna, called juveniles or fingerlings, are raised in tanks on land or floating net pens until they are big enough to move to pens in the ocean. Once the tuna are a certain size, they are moved to large pens or cages in coastal waters or out at sea. These pens are usually made of strong netting and are anchored to the ocean floor. Tuna are fed a diet high in protein, usually made up of small fish like sardines, anchovies, or mackerel. Feeding is closely watched to ensure the tuna grows well and stays healthy. The water quality and environment are also carefully looked after. The tuna can grow to the right size for the market, which can take a few years depending on the farming conditions and market needs. When ready, they are harvested by hand or using special equipment like net pens or purse seines. The harvested tuna is processed and prepared to be sold to markets, restaurants, and other buyers. Bluefin tuna is prized for its tasty flavor and fatty meat and is popular in sushi and sashimi markets worldwide. Although bluefin tuna farming has challenges like dealing with disease, keeping the water clean, and managing environmental issues like waste, it also provides a way to produce seafood sustainably and lessen the strain on wild tuna populations. In aquaculture facilities, it is important to have a proper feeding schedule to make sure the fish grow and develop well. Ensure the fish get all the nutrients they need by giving them a balanced diet with proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals in the right amounts for their species and stage of life. Feed the fish multiple times a day so they get enough nutrients for growth and energy. How often you feed them depends on the type of fish, how big and old they are, and how they behave when they eat. Choose the right type of food for your fish, like pellets, flakes, or granules, based on their size and how they eat. Using food that is easy to digest and tastes good helps the fish absorb more nutrients and grow faster. Keep an eye on how much food the fish eat compared to how much weight they gain. This helps you ensure they are using their food efficiently and not wasting any. Check how fast the fish are growing, the quality of the water they swim in, and the conditions around them to see if you need to change how much you feed them. Think about how warm the water is, how much oxygen is in it, and how fast it moves when you decide how much and how often to feed the fish. If you feed the fish too much or too little, they could get sick. To keep them healthy, feed them the right amount keep the water clean, and ensure they are safe from diseases. To help the fish grow well, ensure you have a good plan for feeding them. Keep an eye on how they are doing and make changes when needed. This will help your aquaculture business be successful and keep going for a long time. Having discussed bluefin tuna farming basics, these questions should pop into our minds. 
What technology and specialized infrastructure are used in bluefin tuna farming operations? How are these technologies being operated? Join us in the next chapter as we delve completely into the technologies and specialized infrastructure of bluefin tuna farming. Bluefin tuna farming operations use advanced technology and specialized infrastructure to improve growth, health, and sustainability. For example, underwater monitoring systems with cameras and sensors observe fish behavior, feeding patterns, and environmental conditions in real time. This helps farmers adjust feeding schedules, identify stress or disease signs, and effectively manage water quality. Automated feeding systems deliver precise amounts of feed at specific times, reducing labor costs and ensuring consistent feeding. Some systems even use underwater cameras and sensors to monitor feeding behavior and adjust as needed. Water quality management systems maintain optimal conditions like temperature and oxygen levels, promoting a healthy environment for the fish and reducing the risk of disease outbreaks. Pens and cages are designed to withstand the marine environment and provide ample space for tuna to grow and swim comfortably. They may include features like predator deterrence, underwater lighting, and nets with different mesh sizes for fish safety. Veterinarians and aquaculture professionals use advanced tools to monitor fish health, detect diseases early, and provide appropriate treatment. Some farms invest in breeding programs to improve growth rate, disease resistance, and meat quality in farmed bluefin tuna. Nutritional experts create specialized feeds tailored to the dietary needs of bluefin tuna at different life stages, focusing on high-quality proteins, lipids, vitamins, and minerals from sustainable sources. Traceability systems track each fish from hatchery to harvest, ensuring product integrity and compliance with regulations. Quality assurance protocols maintain food safety, product quality, and sustainability certifications. By combining these technologies and infrastructure, bluefin tuna farming operations aim to increase efficiency, reduce environmental impact, and produce high-quality fish for global markets. Having discussed the technology and specialized infrastructure used in tuna farming, we should consider these questions. What are the nutritional requirements for bluefin tuna? What are the specialized diets formulated to support their growth in aquaculture settings? Join us in the next chapter as we talk about the feeding and nutrition of bluefin tuna. Bluefin tuna need specific nutrients to grow well and stay healthy in aquaculture. They need a protein-rich diet for muscle growth and overall body function. Fish meal and fish oil are good protein sources for tuna, giving them essential amino acids like lysine and methionine. Tuna also needs lipids and omega-3 fatty acids like EPA and DHA for cell health and immune function. Fish oil, fish meal, and vegetable oils provide these essential fatty acids for tuna. Even though bluefin tuna are carnivorous, they can use carbohydrates for energy. However, too many carbs can cause digestion problems. Tuna diets may have a moderate amount of wheat, corn, or soybean meal for energy. Tuna diets also have vitamins and minerals like A, D, E, and B complex, calcium, phosphorus, and selenium for bone health, immune function, and enzyme activity. Tuna may get antioxidants like vitamin C, E, and selenium to boost their immune system. These help fight stress and keep the fish healthy in aquaculture. Tuna feeds are made easy to digest and tasty so that the fish grow well. The ingredients are chosen and processed carefully to ensure the tuna gets nutrients. 
tuna feed is always improving based on research and feedback. Feed makers work with experts to make diets that fit the needs of bluefin tuna at different stages of life. Aquaculture can help bluefin tuna grow well, use food efficiently, and make tuna farming more sustainable by giving it the right diet. Regarding bluefin tuna farming, the sourcing and composition of feed pellets play a crucial role in the operation's growth, health, and sustainability. Let's delve into these topics. The main sources of protein and lipids in bluefin tuna feed pellets are fish meal and fish oil. Fish meal comes from small pelagic fish such as anchovies, sardines, and mackerel, while fish oil is derived from oily fish species. Feed manufacturers are now sourcing fish meal and oil from responsibly managed fisheries and certified sustainable sources to tackle issues like overfishing and environmental impact. This includes fisheries approved by organizations like the Marine Stewardship Council or those following the International Fish Meal and Fish Oil Organization and responsible supply standards. In addition to marine sources, plant-based proteins like soybean meal, wheat gluten, and corn gluten supplement fish meal in tuna feed pellets. This shift reduces reliance on marine resources and brings potential environmental advantages. Bluefin tuna feed pellets are rich in protein, typically containing 40% to 60% on a dry matter basis. Proteins are essential for muscle growth, tissue repair, and metabolic functions. The lipid content, on the other hand, ranges from 10% to 20% and provides crucial fatty acids like omega-3 for brain development and immune health. Feed pellets are fortified with vitamins, A, D, E, and B complex, and minerals, calcium, phosphorus, and selenium, to meet the nutritional needs of bluefin tuna. Antioxidants such as vitamin C, E, and selenium are also added to boost immune function and combat oxidative stress. Feed manufacturers carefully choose and mix feed ingredients to give bluefin tuna a well-rounded and healthy diet that helps them grow, protects the environment, and supports the sustainability of aquaculture. Imitating the natural diet of wild bluefin tuna in captivity comes with various difficulties because of the complex and varied feeding habits and prey preferences. Wild bluefin tuna eat a wide range of prey, like small fish, squid, crustaceans, and planktonic organisms. However, captive diets usually use a limited number of ingredients, making it hard to match the nutritional variety of their natural diet. Wild bluefin tuna consume prey with different nutrients, such as proteins, fats, vitamins, and minerals. Captive diets must be carefully planned to provide balanced nutrients that meet the fish's growth, health, and reproduction needs. Bluefin tuna engage in behaviors like hunting, chasing prey, and exploring in their natural habitat. However, in captivity, they may not be able to do these natural activities, which can affect their physical and mental well-being. To tackle these challenges, a team effort is needed that combines knowledge of bluefin tuna behavior, nutritional needs, and care practices in captivity. Continuous research and advancements in aquaculture feeding methods, diet formulation, and environmental stimulation are crucial for enhancing the welfare and sustainability of captive bluefin tuna farming. Having discussed the feeding and nutrition of bluefin tuna, we should contemplate these questions. How do farmers prevent diseases in bluefin tuna? What strategies and protocols are employed by fish farmers to maintain the health and welfare of bluefin tuna?
Join us in the next chapter to discuss bluefin tuna's health and disease management. Fish farmers use various strategies and protocols to keep bluefin tuna healthy in aquaculture settings. It's important for the tuna to have good water quality. Farmers check water temperature, oxygen levels, pH, and ammonia and nitrite levels. They use advanced filtration systems to stabilize the water quality and ensure the fish aren't stressed. Farmers take strict measures to stop diseases from spreading. They check new fish, isolate sick ones, and clean equipment and facilities regularly. They also monitor the fish's health through visual inspections and tests to catch diseases early. Bluefin tuna get special diets that help them grow. Farmers tailor feeding schedules to the fish's age, size, and health, watching how much they eat and how they act. They ensure the food is fresh and high quality to help the fish absorb nutrients better. Farmers create an environment that's like the fish's natural habitat. They add rocks or pipes to the pens to encourage the tuna to explore and act like they would in the wild. It is important to prevent stress by having enough fish in a pen and giving them enough space. Farmers may separate fish by size, move them to different pens, or limit how many fish are in each pen to keep things calm. Being gentle when handling and moving the fish helps keep them healthy. Farmers use special tools to move the tuna safely and ensure they aren't hurt or stressed during transportation. Farms have veterinarians who check on the fish regularly and give them medicine if needed. They might use vaccines or antibiotics under a vet's supervision to keep the fish healthy. Research helps farmers find better ways to care for tuna. By working with experts and government agencies, they can share knowledge and new ideas to improve the health and well-being of bluefin tuna. Fish farmers use these strategies and protocols to improve bluefin tuna stocks health, well-being, and productivity while supporting aquaculture operations sustainability and resilience. In aquaculture settings, vaccines and antibiotics are commonly used to help fish stay healthy and prevent diseases from spreading. Vaccines are given to fish to help their immune system recognize and fight off certain bacteria, viruses, or parasites. Aquaculture vaccines come in different forms, such as inactivated, live attenuated, subunit, and DNA. Each type has its own advantages and disadvantages. Fish can receive vaccines through injection, immersion, oral delivery via feed, or bath vaccination, depending on the type of vaccine, fish species, and production system. Vaccinating fish helps to stop diseases from spreading, reduces the need for antibiotics, and promotes sustainable aquaculture by cutting down on treatments. Antibiotics treat bacterial infections in fish caused by pathogens like Vibrio, Aeromonas, or Streptococcus. Common antibiotic classes used in aquaculture include tetracyclines, fluoroquinolones, sulfonamides, and penicillins. Antibiotics are given to fish orally through medicated feed, water, or injection to stop bacteria from growing and help the fish's immune system fight the infection. They should be used carefully in aquaculture to prevent bacteria from becoming resistant to them and to follow rules about antibiotic use in food production. Withdrawal periods? After using antibiotics, fish need time for the medicine to leave their bodies before eating to ensure no harmful residues. Vaccines and antibiotics are important for keeping farmed fish healthy. Still, efforts are being made to use fewer antibiotics by improving how fish are managed, preventing diseases, and finding other ways to treat them, like probiotics, prebiotics, and immunostimulants.
We should consider these questions since we have discussed bluefin tuna's health and disease management. What is the environmental impact of bluefin tuna farming? What are the efforts underway to promote sustainable practices within the industry? Come with us in the next chapter as we discuss the impacts of bluefin tuna farming. Like any type of fish farming, bluefin tuna farming can have good and bad environmental effects. Let's look at how bluefin tuna farming impacts the environment and what is being done to make it sustainable. Raising bluefin tuna on farms can help reduce the strain on wild populations, which are caught too much because people want to eat them in sushi and sashimi. Boost to the local economy. Bluefin tuna farms can help local economies by creating jobs, making money for coastal communities, and supporting other industries like making food for the tuna, equipment, and processing seafood. Bluefin tuna farming can add to pollution in the sea by releasing too much food, waste, and fish poop into the water near the coast. This can cause too many nutrients, harmful algae, and bad water quality. Fish that escape from tuna farms can mix with wild fish, which might lower the variety of genes and change the genes of the wild fish. Escaped tuna could also compete with wild fish for food and homes. Keeping tuna on crowded farms can make them sick and give them parasites. If not handled well, these diseases could spread to wild fish through the water or to escaped fish. Therefore, to help, people are working on making better food for bluefin tuna by using different proteins and fats to reduce the need for wild-caught fish. Farms use better filters and systems to recycle water, keep nutrients low, improve water quality, and lessen environmental impact. Farms are advised to pick good spots for farming, thinking about water depth, currents, and how close they are to special ecosystems. Governments and groups are making rules, suggestions, and certifications to support good fish farming practices and follow the rules for the environment. Ongoing studies and new ideas are focused on creating better farming methods, handling diseases, and improving genes to make bluefin tuna farming more environmentally friendly and strong. To promote sustainability in the bluefin tuna farming industry, we must take a comprehensive approach that considers environmental, social, and economic factors. By following best practices, being open to new ideas, and working together with others involved, the industry can move towards a more sustainable and environmentally friendly future. Why is water quality management important? Keeping water quality at its best is vital for ensuring the well-being and productivity of aquaculture operations, This includes monitoring and adjusting factors like temperature, dissolved oxygen, pH levels, ammonia, nitrite, and suspended solids. Aquaculture facilities use different methods to maintain water quality, such as filtering and recirculating systems. These systems eliminate waste products, extra feed, and harmful substances from the water, ensuring the fish have a clean and safe living environment. Devices like diffusers or paddle wheels boost oxygen levels in the water, especially in crowded systems or when the water gets warm. Checking water quality regularly helps catch problems early on so they can be fixed quickly. Watching how much feed is given and handling waste discharge properly are ways to stop nutrients from building up and lower the chance of eutrophication in nearby waters. Aquaculture activities create waste like leftover food, waste from fish, and other byproducts, which can harm the environment if not dealt with correctly. This is how to tackle it. Farms set up systems to clean out solids, organic matter, and nutrients from wastewater before releasing it.
Techniques like sedimentation, filtration, and biological treatment can help lower the impact of waste effluents on the environment. Some aquaculture places reuse waste materials like fish leftovers and byproducts as food for other species or as fertilizer for crops. Different species are grown close together in integrated multi-trophic aquaculture setups, so the waste from one can be used as nutrients for another. For instance, shellfish or seaweeds can be grown alongside fish to soak up excess nutrients and limit the environmental impact. Systems like recirculating aquaculture and land-based aquaponics keep waste in check by reusing water and nutrients in closed loop systems. These systems require less water exchange and allow for better control over waste management. Aquaculture feed makers are looking into different protein and fat sources to lessen their dependence on wild-caught fish meal and fish oil. They add plant-based proteins like soybean meal, pea protein, and oils like vegetable oils to their feeds to partially or completely replace marine ingredients. New technologies, such as microbial fermentation and single-cell protein production, provide potential alternatives to traditional feed components. Algae, bacteria, and yeast can be grown to produce protein-rich biomass suitable for aquafeeds. Some aquaculture operations follow circular economy principles, where waste from one process is used as input for another. Byproducts from food processing or agricultural residues can be repurposed as feed ingredients for aquaculture. Certification programs like the Aquaculture Stewardship Council and Best Aquaculture Practices encourage sustainable feed sourcing practices and responsible sourcing policies among feed manufacturers. These programs aim to reduce the environmental impact of aquafeed production and lessen the strain on wild fish populations. By adopting these strategies and programs, aquaculture operations are working towards improving environmental sustainability, reducing waste, and decreasing their dependence on wild fish for feed. This will help create a more resilient and responsible aquaculture industry in the long run.